Hello everyone and welcome back to a new episode of the Future Learning series. In this episode I'm going to introduce MAMAL++. I'm going to show you how the authors tackled some of the issues of MAMAL in a very interesting way. In the previous episode I introduced MAMAL, Model Agnostic Meta Learning, and um, this, uh, this paper is quite interesting because it's been used in different ways, in different uh, fields. For instance, it's been used in reinforcement learning, has been used in uh, standard supervised learning, future learning, and it's a very flexible approach. However, it suffers of a few stability problems. In How to Train Your Mammal, introduced in 2019 and iClear, the author proposed a few solutions for these instability issues. So first of all, let's go back to our few shot problem. Recall that we have a support set that I generally call S. And then we have a query set that is often called also target set. And since in how to train your mammal, the author used the notation target, also here we are going to use this notation, and therefore I will identify the query set with T for target. Now what we do in mammal is that we start from a set of weights theta. This is our base network. And then if we have three different tasks, like task one, task two, and task three, then from this base network, we want to rapidly move in the three different directions because we want to solve the three different tasks starting from the same initial point. Now, when you move from theta to theta one, for instance, you can do it in multiple steps. So you can do just one step, so you can jump directly here, or you can do it in more than one step. So if you do it in more than one step, you will have that theta one star, in this case, this is reached through theta one, one, theta one, two, and so on, until we reach theta one star. So theta one star will be the optimal set of weights for solving task one. Generally, we don't get the optimal set of weights, so we get a good approximation starting from theta. Now, this is a representation of the stability problem in MAML. As you can see here, the author of the paper report three seeds of MAML++ and three seeds of MAML. The three seeds of MAML that are represented by the purple, blue, and green corpse are very shaky. Here we have the training loss on the vertical axis and the epochs on the horizontal axis. The epochs are under the 50, and the training loss, as you can see, are very shaky for MAML. While for MAMA++, as you can see here, the loss is very smooth. It shows that MAMA++ is dealing with the stability problem solving it. So, how is this possible? This will give you an idea of why we have this instability problem in MAMA. So, as I told you before, we can reach a certain set of parameters theta1, starting from theta, and we can do it this with a certain number of steps. Suppose that we can do it in one step in this particular example. So we start from theta, we have a neural network with five layers, just four convolutional layers and an output layer. Now from theta, we get theta one, estimating a loss. So we get x s, that is just the input from our support set. We do a forward pass in our network to get O, in this case, I use O for uh, specifying the output of the network. It would be OS. Now, what we do, and we get the loss on the support set between OS, the output of my network, and the real labels that are Y, S. So I will use Y to indicate the real labels of the support set for the specific inputs X, S. So through this loss, what I do, I can, since I am now in theta, I have theta as parameter of my model, 
when I apply this loss and I back propagate, so if I get the gradient in this case from this loss, what I get is theta 1. Once I got theta 1, well, now I can repeat the same process, but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the target set or query set. So we will have x, t, I will get the samples from my query set, do forward pass, and now we'll get the output of my network from the target set. And now the loss that I get will be the loss on the target set, and this will be the loss between my output and the real labels on the target set. And now I will take the gradient of this with respect to theta, and I will update theta. Okay, but to update theta, now we have to pass through theta 1. So if I want to backpropagate from here, then I have to go back here, to go back here, up to theta, right? So this means that I have to traverse, in this case, five layers. I will have to traverse all these five layers to update theta. Now, what's going to happen if I do two steps? So MAML can, can update the weights with more than one step, and but this introduces some problem. So if I start from theta as before, now I do, I will have L1 on the support set to get theta1. Then from theta1, now I can do again forward pass on the support set, I will get theta2 thanks to a second loss, will be L2 on the support set. And thanks to the second loss, I will get theta2. So now we did two steps, right? And now we want to update theta. We want to update the starting point. Mm. How to do it? Well, what you have to do, as before, you have to do a forward pass on the target set this time to get the output. And this time we have to take note, okay? Will it be the output at one for the target set? So yes, you use this notation, it's better. Target set. And so this will be the first output for theta 1. Then we have to do it again. Again, we x or the target or query, and then we will get the output this time 2 for the target. And once I got the second set of weights, well, now I don't have to estimate the loss on this set of weights, right, on this output. What I want now, what is interesting to me, is to backpropagate from theta 2 back to theta. And in MAML, you do this by getting the loss with respect to the target set at step 2. So we get this loss here between the output and my real labels on the target set. So taking the gradient of this, as you can see here, and using the learning rate beta, now I can update theta. So I will update this base network. But to do this, I have to now backpropagate here, here, and then I have to continue. I have to backpropagate also here, right? So now from this final loss, a step two, I have to backpropagate through 10 layers. As you see, before we have to backpropagate through five layers, and now we have to backpropagate through 10 layers. Now, as you can imagine, this can go on and on. So if I have n steps now for taking my theta n, well, now I have to backpropagate through n times five layers. And when I'm going to update my base network, base weights, theta, well, now I have to backpropagate through all of these layers. So I will have to go from the output to go here and so on. And eventually I will reach theta. So I think now you understand what's the problem. The problem is that in MAML, I generally have to do more than one update to the weights to, that, to get a very good approximation of theta star is the optimal 
set of weights for solving my task. But as I go deeper and deeper, now my, my inference graph will grow, okay? It will grow linearly with the number of layers that I have. And now the issue is that we can have the usual vanishing gradient problems because my inference graph will be very deep and we'll have to back propagate through it. And this has all the usual problems that we have with very deep networks and vanishing gradients is one of those. So what the author of MAMA++ propose are different solutions. A trivial solution would be to add some skip connection like you do in residual networks. And this approach is a possible way to do it, but this will basically can be done only if you are using a residual network as your backbone. And moreover, this is not gonna solve completely your, your problem. There is another approach that the authors use, and this is the multi-step loss. So what is the multi-step loss? In MAML, we update the base network after all the inner loop steps, okay, on the target loss. Now, what the author of MAML++ propose is to update the base network after every step on the support set task. Let's see how to do it. So, suppose that we have our theta base network. Now we get our theta1 as usual. We get theta2 using this update rule. We can get theta n using this update rule. Now, once we get theta n, what MAMAL does is just to estimate the loss using the output on the target set on n, comparing it with the labels on the target set. And now what MAML does, standard MAML, is just to take the gradient with respect to theta, and then we have to backpropagate all this. What MAML++ propose is to evaluate this loss on the target set at each after each update. So now we will have, this will be Ln, and we will have L1. L1 will be the loss between output one, this target set, compared with the labels of the target set. And the gradient of this with respect to theta will be one set of gradients that we get. Now we can repeat this also here, so we have L2, all of these are on the target set, right? And in this case, we will have n losses, okay? Now to update theta, I'm going to sum up all these n losses. And moreover, I can introduce also a weight, w, for each one of the n losses. So this goes from one up to n, I will have n weights. And each one of these weights is gonna give a different importance to each one of these n losses. And if the weights are identical, then you are going to give uh, equal weight to all the losses and they will have equal contribution to update theta. But uh, what the authors uh, do in the paper is to give higher weight to the very last loss, to give smaller weights from the last up to the first loss. And um, if you give zero weights to all, all the losses but the last one, in this case you have this particular case of MAMA. Now, this is not the only problem. So the multi-step loss solves some of the issues, but there are also other issues that cause this instability problem in MAML. Another issue that uh, the authors find is that MAML use a single learning rate for each one of the internal steps. MAML++, they use a different solution and they are learning the learning rate using the meta-learning loop. So the network is going to learn its own learning rates. And more importantly, what they do is to learn for each layer, for each step, they are learning a different learning rate. Now, this means that once we get theta1 or theta2, and we have our network with, let's say, four convolution layer, then now for each layer, you will have a particular learning rate. So we'll have, in this case, uh, um, beta 1, parameter 1, beta 4, 1, and now for theta 2, we'll also have a separate set of learning rates. So you will have in this case 1, 
2 you will have beta 4 2 so as you can see for each one of the inner steps for each one of the layer of the network you are learning a different learning rate what's the sense well the sense is that some layers may have to change a lot and some layers instead don't have to change for instance the very first layer here it generally has very generic features and, and this means that we don't have to change it so much while the very last layer maybe has to change much more so this that's another interesting solution and but we can push this idea even further and this is what has been done in meta sgd where you have for each weight of your network you have a separate learning rate so if your neural network has one million parameters now you are going to have one million learning rates and what's the idea the idea is that you are learning an sgd algorithm and they call this meta sgd because you are training this using the meta learning approach this is also an interesting paper i invite you to give a look at it so to conclude, we saw how MAML++ identified some of the stability issues of MAML and how the authors propose uh, two different solutions like the multi-step loss and particular update rule for the learning rate to solve this issue. And that's all for today. Thank you and I will see you next time.